Here are some of the latest images from the Sardinian port of Cagliari, where earlier an Irish Navy vessel, the James Joyce, unloaded 617 migrants rescued in recent days, among them 25 children. Well, joining us, one of Italy's most respected columnists, former diplomat Sergio Romano, who writes for Correa della Sera. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. The Thank e you. The EU made what many consider a Faustian pact with Turkey that's mostly shut down the Balkan route for migrants. Now it's back to the North African route and Italy on the front line. What should Matteo Renzi be saying behind closed doors to Angela Merkel? Well, I think he's going to say that uh, we need help, we need the solidarity of other countries, which we do get to a certain extent. And uh, I suppose uh, that um, he can say, uh, and I hope he will, uh, that the situation in Italy is not as serious as it is in other um, European countries, such as Poland or such as Hungary or even Austria which is on our borders, uh, for a number of reasons, because there is, of course, criticism, uh, anxieties from a part of, from sections of Italian public opinion. But frankly, what I think makes a difference is that we have a pope. And this is a Catholic country, and the Pope has taken on the problem of the migrants a very, very open and courageous uh, standing. And so even people who are criticizing the government for being too liberal, for being not worried enough, uh, must, uh, to a certain extent, come to terms with their own uh, faith. And if the Pope says that the migrants are the sons of God, I mean, there you are. I mean, it's difficult to, to tell that the Pope is wrong. Yeah, we, we heard the Pope speak out again this uh, Wednesday on the matter and uh, in the terms that you just uh, described. Uh, Sergio, we've heard over and time and again the Italian prime ministers say that too often Italy's been left to its own devices. Things have changed a little on that score well, with a, a common uh, European rescue mechanism. We saw that Irish vessel was the one that dropped off those, those migrants. How do Italians feel about that? Well, I think Renzi is going through a difficult period. Uh, that is definitely true. Uh, basically, because um, the Partito Democratico, the Democratic Party, which is really the Italian Social Democratic Party, finds uh, Renzi too much to the right. In, in, we have a situation not unlike the situation in Britain at the time of Tony Blair, when the left-wing people, the really left-wing people, were not really satisfied with the prime minister who looked so much like uh, Margaret Thatcher. And this is really the criticism that comes from the left. So if there is somebody uh, Matteo Renzi must worry about, it's his own party. And the party is making it difficult for him also because we have a, an important deadline in November, a vote on a referendum for a constitutional reforms. And the opposition, uh, funny enough, is coming exactly from Renzi's party. And, um, and he's going to have a difficult moment. I want to ask you more about that referendum and the context of it later on. Stay with us, though, uh, Sergio Romano. Uh, we want to show you something. Braving death to cross the Mediterranean, only one hurdle for the refugees and migrants we've been talking about. For reporters, the France 24 investigative news magazine, Julien Sauvager and Catherine Nordstrand went to northern Niger and followed those ready to first cross the Sahara. <laughs> Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. You go that side, my man. <laughs> hey, you, get out of the way. You're taking up too much space with your big feet. 24 migrants are crammed into the back of each pickup, with only wooden rods jammed between their legs to stop them falling off. In these rare images, you get a feel of the scale of this clandestine migration. It's a well-rehearsed routine. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Thanks a lot. Good luck. For those migrants who don't have enough money to leave, it's a difficult moment. Abu Bakr is still waiting for funds. 
he won't be going to Sweden anytime soon. I want to just move and go with them. Are you tired of waiting? Yeah, I need the job. I cannot have the job. How I can survive if I can I can job? I'm gonna pray for them to be in a destination where they want to go. The epic journey starts at least three days' drive to Libya. They travel in convoy for security. Bandits and armed groups target the pickups. But that's far from the only danger. A breakdown can be fatal. It's deflated on this side. Yes, on this side too, there was a bump in the road. The brakes smell funny as well. We've got three spare tires. But this is the Sahara. If you break down in your car, no one's going to come and rescue you. You're going to be stuck there. Dying stranded in the desert is a very real risk. Okay, bye bye. And that report in full on September 10th here on France 24. We're in the company of Sergio Romano, columnist for Italian daily uh, Corriere della Sera. Those, those uh, migrants uh, headed, come what may, braving the dangers of the desert to go to Libya, uh, even if Libya was a calm, stable country, it seems they would still be going. What can be done? Well, yeah, for the time being, not really very much. We've got to try and receive as many as possible. We should be able, we are not, we haven't been for the time being, to distribute the effort among all the countries of the European Union. But we know, of course, that there is a great deal of opposition. Angela Merkel, who was by far the most generous of European leaders, is paying for her generosity, in a sense, because... Uh, um, the polls in the country really have registered uh, a decline in her uh, popularity. Um, there you are. There is no other solution. I don't think we are going to be able to stop them. Um, of course, people say that we ought to try and make agreements with the country they come from so that they manage to keep them at home. But very often, the countries they come from have no real government. So whom are we going to be able to speak to? With whom are we going to be able to make agreements that will help them to stay on the spot and be taken care of? And on that point, let me ask you, because we saw recently with the Brexit referendum that the question was about the European Union, but it turned out very much to be a referendum on immigration. Will it be the same with that November referendum that you mentioned on constitutional reform in Italy? No, this is not the case. I see no connection, and I think that there will be no connection, at least for the time being, because um, we are really talking about something entirely different, that is um, a constitution that has aged very much. Uh, we are the only country in Europe that has two chambers that do exactly the same thing. Uh, a law has got to be approved by both chambers. The government has got to ask both chambers for a vote of confidence. Uh, and very often, the two chambers have a different majority. And uh, as a result, uh, you can be voted uh, and receive a vote of confidence from the chamber, and, be, and you can be denied the vote of confidence by the Senate. So I think uh, the constitutional reform is very wise. But then, of course, if you really don't like your prime minister, 
uh, you will vote against him, not because you dislike the reform. You say you do, but it isn't the, tr the true motive, the true reason, but simply because uh, you find that the time has come to get rid of the prime minister. And this is, um, unfortunately, I think, uh, Matteo Renzi's uh, 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 situation at the moment. Uh, the referendum will be in November. We'll see what happens. All right. Many thanks. Uh, Sergio Romano, thank you so much for joining us from Milan. Sergio Romano, columnist at Italian Daily Corriere della Sera.